So if you want to know Weezy makes these crazy ethnic melodies, this is the perfect video for you. Yo, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how Weezy makes crazy ethnic trumpet, horn or brass samples, whatever you want to call it. So first of all, as always, I'm going to show you all the sample. Then after that, I will show you how I mix it. And then after that, I will show you how I mastered and process it. So y'all make sure to stay till the end. And as you can see, I'm finally back. My PC is fixed. And now I'm going to play out the sample. The sample is in my newest kit, which just dropped on Friday. It's the Luca did the Stash Volume 3. It has all my drum sounds that I've ever used and all the drum sounds that I use in all my placements. So they are placement ready sounds. These are like the industry essentials. So y'all make sure to get that. Use code LUCADID15 for 15% discount on checkout. And yeah guys, let's go. So the sample might sound complex, but it's really, really simple. And the first thing I used was contact and I used the vintage horns bank. And what I basically just did was laying down this E minor chord and then copying it up and using the G, copying that and pasting it up again. Then I just had these chord variations, I would call it, which is basically just, I took the G down one right here again and right there again. So it's basically just one note that goes down, but it gives the sample a lot of variation. I randomized the velocities, which you can do with Alt and R. And then for the last three chords on the sample, of each for bars. I added on a root note of C, put an F sharp right there, then the C, F sharp, and then a B. And then I had this D chord right here and transitioned it into the same chord basically, but I just took the C to an A and the G to an F sharp. And that's basically it. As I said, I randomized the velocities and the finished pattern is sounding like this. And for the effects on this trumpet, I had this RC20 basically just for the wobble and DQ. The then this Valhalla Vintage Verb where I tweaked the mix and the decay. Then this simple soof on its almost default settings, I just turned the knob from 3 to 2. Then I had this EQ where I just cut out some of the lows, ducked some of the low mids and ducked some of the highs. And I put it 27% in stereo. Then for the next thing, I used Orchestral Essentials 2. And I used the small violins, violas, Ensemble Long. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it had the release trails option on. And what I basically just did was laying down an E minor chord and copying up once. I didn't even randomize the velocities, didn't strum it or anything. And this is how the finished string pattern is sounding like. So yeah, it's pretty repetitive, but that's what I was going for because I just wanted the sample to sound a bit more full and that's what I got with these strings. And for the effects on these strings, I had this fully parametric EQ2 where I just cut out some of the bass frequencies, some of the mids and some of the high mids. Then I had this soof on a hard setting and the depth to 5.9. Then I had this EQ where I cut out a lot of the lows and ducked a lot of the highs and I had a 25% in stereo. Then for the next thing, I had these two violin phrases from Splice and what I basically just did was pitching it up at 5 just to bring it into the key, put the modern string the d click mode to generic and for the other phrase i did the same thing i had it on the second mixer track but for the second string phrase i had the d click mode on transient so basically on nothing and the finished string pattern is sounding like this <laughs> And for the effects on this violin phrase, I had this RC20 just for the wobble and the EQ again. Then I had this Valhalla Vintage Verb where I tweaked the mix, the decay and the low cut. Then this fully parametric EQ where I cut out a lot of the lows, some of the low mids, ducked some of the highs and removed the frequency in a high mid range. Then I had this soof on a hard setting and the knob to 4.2. Then this simple EQ just to duck it more into the background and to remove some of the lows again and some of the highs. And I had a 27% in stereo. Then for the next thing I had this KBZ bass grand. It's just a simple bass. It's like a moog bass. And I just used the crossfed option. And then obviously use loop points was on. Then I had this envelope where I just had the hold on. The bass line is basically just the root notes from the trumpets. And the finished bass line is sounding like this.
Then for the effects on the space line, I had this simple soothe on its hard setting and the knob to 12.7. It's basically just there because I think it can't recognize the low frequencies or like the bad low frequencies that well. So I turned it to 12.7. Then I had this arc compressor from Waves with a threshold to minus 16.9 and a ratio to 2.37. Then this simple decapitator where I played with the drive, the tone and the style. Then this for the fast distortion where I played with the mix on a default setting. I basically turned the mix to 35%. Then I had this for the parametric EQ2 where I cut out some of the muddy lows and one frequency in the low bass area and I had a 100% in mono. Then for the next thing I had the intro and the intro is basically just from this string phrase right here it's the same thing but what i did i had it on a second mixer track and i had this melodyne on it where i basically just changed this note from i think it was an a to an b and without melodyne it will sound like this and with the melodyne it sounds like this so it just said that it perfectly blends in with the normal sample. Then I had this simple reverse crash sound from my stash kit. The link for that will be in my description and in the comments. So y'all don't miss out on that. And I basically just load the volume, put it on the 17th mixer track where I don't have any effects on it. And I just left it a little bit longer so it doesn't really like cut out when the sample starts playing. And the intro is sounding like this. And now for the mastering effects, I had this A1 zero control from Alex Hilton, where I had the zero wife to 125%. And I had the safe bass option on. Then I had this R compressor, which I didn't use. It's just there in case I want to use a compressor, obviously, and to glue the sample a bit more together. Then this every road vinyl stereo from Waves again. And I have my own preset. I showed it to you in the last video, so I can copy the settings. Then this sound shift to pitch zero from Waves again, where I pitch it down by three. Then this chroma tape stereo with the mastering big and open preset i didn't touch it at all i just had this preset on then there's l1 limiter zero and as you can see i have the threshold on minus 6.4 and the out ceiling on minus 3.0 then i have this roof on its default settings and then i have this eq in case i want to cut something out but i didn't want to do that in this sample because i think it sounded perfect the way it was and first of all the finished sample is sounding like this And now for the beat, I basically just dragged in the sample, put the mode on stretch, put the declicker mode on generic, put it on the first mixer track, and on the first mixer track there's just a slow cut, so the bass frequency will get cut out. And for the first thing I did for the beat was this hi-hat, which is the uh, Luca did this beautiful hi-hat out of the stash volume 3 again. And what I did was basically just laying a pretty spacey hi-hat pattern, as you can see, with a few rolls, and I changed the velocity on a few notes, which you can see right here, and on this roll right there. But it's a very simple and basic hi-hat pattern, which still sounds like this. Then for the next thing I have the second snare clap from my stash kit again and it's just a basic clap pattern which sounds like this. Then for the next thing I had this Jacob snare which is out of my stash kit again and as you can see it's a very busy snare pattern. I had a lot of rolls and velocity changes but overall it fits pretty well with the height, 8 weight, clap and stuff like that and the finished snare pattern is sounding like this. Then I just had the simple open net, which always hits on the one. And I laid down this 808 pattern, which looks pretty complex and is pretty busy, but it fits to the beat. And as you can see, I had these rolls right here at the end and there. For the switch up, I used the Zay 808, but it's the same pattern. And then I just added my tag and the finished beat is sounding like this.
Okay yeah, guys, if you all enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to activate the bell as well, it would really mean a lot. So y'all get a notification every time I upload or live stream, because I will be live streaming a lot in the next few weeks. So don't miss out on that, I'll be doing beat critique and stuff like that. And as I said, don't miss out on my kit, the Stash Volume 3 is out now. And use code LUCADID15 for 15% discount at checkout. And this sample is in there as well, so as I said, don't miss out. And thank you all for this crazy support, even though I couldn't upload because my whole PC broke down. And yeah guys. See ya.